Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a very proud man and I'm called Cameron McIntosh. And uh, for all of us, for all of us, this has been the most emotional occasion, um, I can't tell you. And it takes me back to another very emotional night, which was exactly 10 years ago at the Royal Shakespeare's Barbican Theatre. We'd had a very long rehearsal period and an extremely hectic preview period. And we opened, and the night it opened, something magic happened with the show, and it went out of our hands. And I remember in the second act, creeping back into the director's box at the back of the Barbican, and I slunk into the box to watch the barricade scene unfold. And the show was so much more than I ever dreamed when I listened to the original French concept album, that out of sheer relief and just emotion, I just burst into tears and grabbed the hand of the only other person that was in the box, who was designer John Napier. <laughs> Luckily for me, John realized that I was being artistic, not familiar. <laughs> Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have survived the evening. Well, that was the first of many evenings around the world, and the show has gone on to be the most extraordinary success, playing in front of audiences the same the whole world over. It's been seen by over 40 million people in 25 million, 25 million countries, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Too old. 25 countries, and the reception's always been the same. Um, I can't tell you how much that it means to have worked with all these wonderful artists. I mean, it's quite fashionable in some foreign countries to say that the British musical depends on scenery. Well, tonight triumphantly proved them wrong. <laughs> the musical theatre has always depended on talent, and I'm pretty sure I'm safe in saying that I will never ever stand on the same stage with so many talented people as I have tonight. Thank you. <laughs> if ever a show has been made by the public, it is this one. So I thank you all for coming and I'm so thrilled that so many people have come from representing audiences from around the world my grateful thanks to you all. Um, if I was going to thank everybody involved with this show, we'd be here for another decade. So I'm just going to resist and I'm just going to say thank you Victor Hugo for being out of copyright. <laughs> um, and thank you John Cameron for your wonderful thrilling orchestration. Herbert Kretzner for his haunting, beautiful words. Ladies and gentlemen, Herbert Kretzner. No production could have had a more brilliant creative team. Designers David Hersey, John Napier, Andy Neofitu, and Andrew Bruce surpassed themselves with this production. And under, and under the inspired direction of John Caird and Trevor Nunn, they have given one of the great classic stagings of the British theatre. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Trevor Nunn and John Caird. If I just blundered in here from outside without knowing what was going on, I'd imagine I was witnessing the end of yet another successful Labour Party conference. <laughs> um, or, or just possibly the, overaction, the overreaction of producers about to present um, Cameron McIntosh's This Is Your Life. <laughs> um, as Cameron has just mentioned, 
10 years ago, the show started under the banner of the Royal Shakespeare Company. And uh, at that time, it was scurrilously and cruelly suggested that the Royal Shakespeare Company had been relegated to the sidelines and weren't going to be involved in the future of the show. So 10 years on, it gives me gigantic pleasure to be able to say publicly that the Royal Shakespeare Company has benefited to the tune of more than 10 million pounds during that period. Um, And there's a very strong likelihood that without that 10 million pounds, we wouldn't have a Royal Shakespeare Company to go on supporting. So for that and for the countless other pleasures that this show has given me, I thank everybody on this stage tonight. Thank you. all over the world. Um, Trevor and I would like to um, give a great vote of thanks for all our wonderful associate directors all over the world who put the show on on our behalf, um, but especially Richard J. Alexander in, in America for all the productions he's done there, and the great Ken Caswell. We know Ken is in the building somewhere. If he hadn't been here today, you wouldn't have seen what you saw tonight, because Ken put all this up on its feet for all of us. Uh, ten years. Yeah. Ten years on, and as Cameron says, one of the great privileges of, of working on Les Miserables all over the world is the extraordinary number of friends we've all made. And it would have been lovely if they had all been able to come here tonight. But if everybody who'd ever performed in Les Mis had made it tonight, we'd have had to take a larger arena than the Royal Albert Hall. So Trevor and I have decided that we're going to extend an invitation to all of them on Cameron's behalf. <laughs> Cameron doesn't know about this yet. It's going to be a bit of a shock to him. <laughs> but, um, and you're all invited too. <laughs> and the date will be the 8th of October, 2005 for the 20th anniversary of Les Miserables in Wembley Stadium. I promise I'll share everything with Trevor and John, including the bill for that one. Finally, I have only one thing more to do. There are two friends of mine without which we would not be here tonight. They are, of course, Alan Bubiel and Claude Michel Chambert. I think I must tell you tonight that the first time we met Cameron in 1983, he told us, you don't realize what you have written, but you, you will in 10 years if things go right. We took this for kind of flattery, you know, someone wanted to get the rights from us. <laughs> At a better price, which he did actually. <laughs> But you must agree with me that tonight, his word sounds like sheer prophecy. And we are about to present you with an international surprise. And I want to dedicate this surprise tonight, this international surprise, to the man who dreamt the international success of Le Miserable and who has offered us this incredible evening, Cameron McIntosh.
one day I have to face the, fi the fact that I have to write the finale of Act One. It was a nightmare. <laughs> it was a huge traffic jam in my head <laughs> because I have to put together all the characters of the show in only one song. It took me months and months. But when Cameron told me that tonight we're going to have 17 Jean Valjean from 17 countries singing in their own language all together, <laughs> I was in a state of panic. <laughs> so we're trying something. And ladies and gentlemen, from all over the world, these are the Jean Valjeans coming out. 